Hi everybody. Today we're going to take a look at a basic reaction and the purpose of this is number one, obviously to see the reaction, but number two we're going to introduce an amount to you in chemistry today called moles. Okay, and now this is kind of a complicated idea and something that's hard to put into words, but we're going to look at some amounts from a reaction and I want, just want you to get the big picture of why we need to have some specific measurements in chemistry and what it can show us. So right now we've got a, a reaction going and it's in this little thing called a crucible and right now we have a piece of magnesium metal inside that crucible. We're trying to force it to react with oxygen. We're going to come back to this. I just have to heat it up for a while so it's going to sit here and cook for a while while I'm talking. Now we're using pure magnesium metal. It comes in this ribbon. Okay, and it looks just like kind of a flat, not real shiny metal. It's very soft. I can bend it around. Okay, but magnesium, uh, it's kind of cool. It's what you get in a lot of uh, things where you start a fire with, with flint and steel. Okay. It's magnesium tends to burn very easily, which means it's going to react with oxygen. But right now, there are literally trillions and trillions of atoms of magnesium in here. An atom is so tiny, we can't really count specific individual atoms. We have to have a bigger number of them. Um, so there's an, there's an amount in chemistry called a mole, which represents a huge number of atoms. And the periodic table is built based on this amount. Okay? We've, we've got that amount inherently in those numbers up there, and you're going to see how to deal with it. But right now, there's trillions and trillions of these atoms. What we're going to do is try to figure out how many moles of atoms there are. And one mole is equal to this number. See if you can comprehend this. 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd power. That's 602 with 21 zeros after. We don't even have a numerical name for something that big. So in chemistry, we call that amount a mole. One mole of anything is equal to that many particles. It's a huge amount. Now I've done some pre-measurements here, and we're gonna take a look at what this does. But before we jump into those measurements, I just wanna show you what kind of reaction is happening inside here when we can't see it, okay? I'm going to try to get it to react with the oxygen out here. And you can see that's a really bright light. It's almost like welding. You have to kind of look away for a while, otherwise it hurts your eyes. Okay, right now it's reacting with oxygen. Okay. And as you look at that, we'll turn the lights on. This looks like just a big old string of ash. Oh, and then it just went on the table. Now a lot of that ash actually floated away as smoke. So the reason we're doing that reaction inside this crucible with a lid on it is we're trying to get it to actually react and give off this smoke, but we catch the smoke. We capture the smoke inside there and it settles into this dust because we would like to know how much it weighs. Okay. So I want you to take a look at these numbers up on top of the, up on this board. Okay. We started with some measurements. The piece of magnesium that's in here weighs 0 0.08 grams. That's not very much. Okay. Here's what all the glassware, okay, so the porcelain crucible and the lid and the magnesium all put together have this weight. And then we had done this experiment beforehand and got some measurements so we didn't have to wait around for 20 minutes for it to cool off. And I want you to look at these two numbers. Here's the crucial thing. All of this stuff, the magnesium and the crucible, all weighed 25.91 grams before we started. When we got done burning it and we were able to capture the smoke, it was heavier. Now that doesn't seem right to you, but that's because we never really capture fires. The smoke always goes away. It always floats out somewhere. It goes up a chimney or just goes out in the atmosphere, and we don't really know how much weight was there. But as we burn this magnesium, it's actually getting heavier. And the way we interpret that, it's not getting heavier by much, but it's a measurable amount is that must be oxygen atoms that came in and attached to the magnesium and made it into this white, fluffy, ash-like material. So the big thing here is the magnesium went out and it attached to some oxygen atoms and it got heavier as the reaction went on. Now over here, we're going to work on this type of thing in class. You're going to look up here and say, I see a conversion, but I don't really recognize this. What we have to learn to do is we have to learn to figure out, we have to take a beginning amount in grams, which is something we can physically measure, and we're going to use the periodic table to convert it to what we call moles. That number looks a lot smaller because we're taking into account that a mole has trillions and trillions of, of atoms within it. And what I'm going to do is take this weight that it gained, and I'm going to convert that to moles as well. But that's moles of oxygen. Up here is moles of magnesium. Down here is moles of oxygen. 
The cool part is we do this and we actually see these amounts end up being the same. When we look at their grams, they don't look the same at all. But when we convert it to moles, we can see that this is the same as this. And what that tells us is these are in a one to one ratio. So experimentally, we've determined that magnesium and oxygen, when they come together, come together as what we call magnesium oxide. It's a one to one ratio. And we can experimentally see that just by the weight that it gained during the reaction. Now let's take a look at what this looks like while it's happening. I'm only going to lift this up for small amounts of time. I don't screw up here. There we go. Take a look inside. You see it start to glow. It's igniting. It's burning. It's burning a little bit slower because there's limited oxygen in here. And then I put the lid on and I capture that smoke so that it doesn't go away. And I keep doing that. And eventually I just get this ash in there and I get a bunch of smoke built up on the bottom of that lid. And I'm going to weigh all of it together so that I didn't lose a whole bunch of smoke in the process. This is called determining an empirical formula. It's basically finding a chemical formula and we're using the weight gain here to lead us there. What we have to do this week is we have to figure out how to turn a mass of something into moles and the periodic table is our guide for this. We'll use the periodic table as a way to sort of track these amounts and then we can look at relationships and go, oh, there's a one-to-one -one relationship or there's a two-to-one -one relationship and we'll know something about the chemical formula. Rather than looking at charges, we're looking at mass to get us there. Okay, so this is your introduction into why we care about moles. Moles will be used from here on out in chemistry. Megan Dunway, you have a telephone call in the main office. Megan.